It's a birthday. I call this story the truth. My mother-in-law hosted a lovely Easter. Her table was as long as a bowling alley, and she had dressed it in white linen, used her finest china, finest crystal. There was a little lamb made out of butter sitting there waiting for the rest of the meal to join him. The house was holiday warm. You know how it gets when the oven's been on all day and there's extended family smashed in the house? All the adults were laughing, talking, eating and drinking, and the kids were just running crazy. Well, the truth is, I always gravitate towards the kids because I'm really not very good with adults. So when my oldest granddaughter said to me, Grandma Silly, oh. I know, most fun role you'll ever play, Grandma. Grandma Silly, let's play Chase. I scooped up my little grandson, little Maximus Hawk, put him on my hip, and started to run. And he always laughs more if I shake my hips, so I'm shaking, and then Carmela and Valerie, they laugh a whole lot if I go to catch them and I just miss. So I'm running and shaking and reaching and just missing and having the time of my life. And I should have just kept running. I should have just kept running and running. And then I would not have single-handedly ruined Easter. We ran by my husband's brother's fiance's mother's husband. <laughs> Matters not all who he is, so if you didn't follow, that's fine. We'll just keep rolling right on. So this man, he looks at my grandson, he looks me right in the eye, and he pronounces, he is your favorite. So this distant relative, who knows me not at all, does not know that chocolate's my favorite food, does not know that green is my favorite color, certainly doesn't know that smart ass is my very favorite personality trait, and yet he thinks he knows about my sacred relationship with my grandchildren? So after just a short little period of stunned silence, I politely correct him. All three of my grandchildren are my favorite. So then, my husband's brother's fiance's mother's husband, who knows me not at all, corrects me yet again. He's the boy. He's the important one. <laughs> so now I'm flabbergasted. Can't believe my ears? Did he just tell me that my grandson is more important than my granddaughter's? That disbelief quickly turned to rage. And that rage met a whole lot of other rage inside of me. I would say roughly 51 years worth of rage was flying around inside at that point. <laughs> So I set my sweet little grandson, Maximus Hawk, on the ground, and I swiveled to face my husband's brother's fiance's mother's husband, who from this point forward we will refer to as Dick. <laughs> so I swiveled to face Dick. My arm was pretty much like an arrow. That baby shot right back and pow. Right into his big fat nose. <laughs> Well, red is a very powerful color. It's strong, full of life. And that nose gushed plenty of life right onto my mother-in-law's lovingly set table. The deep, dark red spots, they looked vibrant against the background of her pure white china. As that red liquid of life seeped into the white tablecloth, it created a very lovely tie-dye effect. <laughs> Not as lovely was the blood on the lamb butter. <laughs> the truth is, I felt so much better. <sighs> Most of the rage had left my body that the second my fist met his face. It just kind of gushed out of me, just like the blood gushed out of his nose. And just as my arrow-like arm had worked on its own, my voice took off. <laughs> Your blood looks exactly like the blood of a girl! Oh 
my God. So, the truth is, I didn't punch him. Sorry. I am, I am sorry. But like, there is a part of me, a really, really, really big part of me, that wishes I had. It would have helped to make it rid of some of my anger. But would punching Dick have helped him see that women are as important as men? The punch, that punch that would have felt so good, may not have helped. But what I actually did didn't help either. And the truth is, and I'm embarrassed to tell you the truth, because you'll probably respect me more with the punch. Once I heard, he's the important word, or he's the important one, I didn't hear another word. I just kind of heard, wah, 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 wah. Dick kept going, and Dick kept going, and I was fuming and fuming and pissed off, and yet my exterior remained really calm and composed. And here's the worst part. As he went on and on, I had kind of like a ladylike smile on my face. <laughs> Why, why, why was I polite? And the fact that I kept a smile on my face as he continued to drone makes me want to punch myself in the face. I walked away pissed. My Easter was ruined. I mean, yes, I still did eat dinner, and yes, it was delicious. <laughs> I, of course, continued to play with the grandkids, and they amazed me and made me laugh and made me so happy. But my whole day kind of had that cloud of just an incredible anger. And then I thought, months later, I thought, maybe Dick, in his asinine comment, wasn't really the problem. After all, who am I to judge? Maybe the problem, my problem, is my mixed response to his comment. Dick, help me see my lifelong habit of smiling on the outside when I am seething on the inside. The truth is, I have no idea why I feel I have to do that. But I know it's time to stop. Time to be brave enough to voice my opinion even when it differs from others. Time to stick up for myself. Otherwise, I'm just going to continue to collect more and more and more and more rage. So when I see Dick at the wedding of my husband's brother as he marries Dick's wife's daughter, <laughs> I'll be ready. I'll be ready to confidently counter his chauvinism. I'll explain how my gender is also important. I'll politely and passionately stick up for my granddaughters my daughters, my friends, and myself. And if Dick is not responsive to that truth, then I'll punch him.